Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we are working on the fantasy castle on the floating island. Today we'll work on the shape of the castle and we'll see if there's some new hints and tricks that you haven't heard of before whilst we're making it. Remember there's lots of links in the description for other playlists, courses and so forth. So do check those out. Okay, so this is where we got to last time. We've got our grass and we've got our rock. Now you might have a low poly version that isn't texture painted in the same way. And the castle building itself won't differ depending on what style you're doing, but the way you texture it will. So let's bring our cursor to this point here. So shift right click and shift A to add. And it makes sense to start with a cylinder. Now I'll go back to solid mode so we can see our shape easily. And I think for our cylinder, we certainly don't need 32 vertices. So perhaps bringing it down to 16 and see what that looks like. I think that's a lot better. I always choose something that's divisible by four because then if we want to mirror it, it won't have any trouble. If you want a really low poly chunky look, then you might want to go even lower than that to something like eight, but I'll stick with 16. Okay, let's scale this down into position. It's a good idea to use the different views. So one, three, and seven are front view, side view, and top view respectively. And I think something around there is great. So let's go into edit mode with tab, face mode with three, and choose the top face and start moving this around. So I'll go back to front view again, but this time I think I'll pull out another window here and another one here. And I'll make this one side view and this one front view and this one perspective view. It's not necessary, I just find it helps the modeling process. I'll move these down so I'll make the castle up here. And this will help us create a sort of curvy castle but not make it too uniform on one axis. So I'll scale this one down and then I'll start in front view and I'll control right click. So that creates an extrusion to the point where your cursor is and I'll scale that down. You can just of course press E to extrude and pull it out and then grab it, maybe rotate it and scale it in. So G, R and S on your keyboard. I'll minimize this so you don't get confused. But I find the control right click a little bit faster. And can you see it's quite uniform down the side here which we might want to change in a moment. So I'm scaling down gradually as we go up and I'll finish somewhere around there. Now we can go into edge mode with two and grab some edge loops with alt left click. I'll zoom in just a touch. So I'm trying to grab this edge loop around here and maybe grab that out this way and grab this one a bit further out and create some variation. So it's not just down one axis, it's down two. Now you may find you want to adjust some of these shapes slightly. So I feel like these ones are a little bit too thick at the top. So I can grab a face loop this time and scale that down. And you might find you want to perhaps grab an edge loop with two on my keyboard, Alt, left click to grab an edge loop and Control B to bevel if you feel like your curves need a bit more curvage. <laughs> so maybe this one down here as well, Control B to bevel. And of course you can use your mouse to add another curve as well. And again, it depends how sort of chunky and blocky you want it to look. So I think somewhere around there looks good. Now it's a good idea to have a good look around and think about what it looks like. I think it's a bit too big for our island now. You can use the proportional edit, which is up here. And let's take this top section here, for example, I can scale that down and I've got my circle of influence there and I can start scaling that down. And the height might be about right, but I think the thickness as it goes up is a bit too thick. Perhaps somewhere around there. And I'm thinking actually I need my turret on the top so it is all a bit big. So I'll select all and scale in the Z. And actually I think this will be better in object mode because my object center is at the bottom. So I'll go into object mode and scale in the Z and you'll see it go down towards the object center, which makes a bit more sense. So just adjust your shape until you're happy. So I think around there looks fine. Now let's make the turrets. So let's go in and select the top face. Now what I'm going to do is duplicate this face, so Shift D and just move it up really slightly so it's away from the others. If I zoom into that with full stop or period key on my numpad, you can see it's just away from the other one. And then I'm going to press P to separate by selection. So I'm using that face there to create a new object. I need to go back into object mode and then choose that face and then back into edit mode to go into that face and into that object and start editing it. So now I can select this, extrude and scale. Again, looking over at the side here to see what's going on and extrude and grab upwards with G and then Z. 
And then I might want to flatten this out over here. But remember, you may have proportional edit on, so I'll undo that with right click and turn it off. And now rotate it. You can zoom in just a touch here, G then Z, and scale up. Now just make sure you've got the shape right before you do anything else. I think it needs to follow the curve a bit, so I may adjust my castle base a bit more. And what we can do with that, I can go into object mode, select both, and go into edit mode with both, and select this section here, and then I can move them around together. Oh, I need to do that in X-ray mode just up here. So select those areas, possibly just the top ones actually, and then think about how I'm positioning these. And now I can flatten up that top face there. So just make sure you've tidied up a bit, so grabbing the edge loops. If you hold down Shift, so G and then hold down Shift, you get smaller increments so you can make minor adjustments and it's a bit easier. So G then Shift. You can press G twice for edge slide if you want to do a bit of an edge slide to move them so they're a bit more uniform. And have a good look around and make sure you're happy. Okay, back into object mode and I'll select this one again, back into edit mode, interface mode, and just sort out the top face. I think a bit wider for that, and I'm happy there. Now I'm going to extrude upwards, scale in, and let's go back to front view here. And I can now use my control right click command to give it a bit of bend, perhaps something like that. That might be a bit too extreme, but we'll see. Yep, yeah, probably a bit too much, so we'll go in and we can adjust these. And just alt left click, and you can move these things around without too much hassle. Okay, so a little bit less bend. Again, it doesn't have to be this chunky, but I think this should look fine. Okay, so now I'll come back into solid mode, so out of X-ray mode, and I'm going to select this edge loop around here so we can separate the roof from the turret. I'm going to press V to split vertices. So you can see that I've split all those vertices and they're now two separate objects. I'll right click and now it's back in place, but they are two separate objects. I'll select the top edge loop and scale that up and then I'll extrude it inwards. So E then S. So it's in roughly the same place as the other one. There are other ways we could have done that, but I like to have them as separate objects. I think it's easier for texturing later. And then I'm going to grab this face loop here, Alt, left click on one of those edges going across and E to extrude downwards, then S to scale up. And I tend to have that one coming out a bit further. Now it might go a bit stretched in the middle here. We can always select this inside edge loop there and scale that up as well. And so we've got a sort of witch's hat top there and then just some minor adjustments once again. And that all looks fine. Now I'm noticing in the image I did before, there was a flat base on the turret and I think that looks a bit better. So I might just quickly go and change that. So both selected into edit mode X-ray mode, I'll select those edges and rotate them. Just move them into position until I'm happy. And there we go. Now for the second and third turrets down here, it's easy enough just to select these and copy them and scale them down. So I'm going to Shift D to copy, tab into edit mode. I'll sort the roof out so it's a bit flatter and maybe take out a few edge loops that we don't need. So I'll remove this edge loop here. In fact, let's just go out of X-ray mode. So two, Alt, left click, Delete, Dissolve Edges, and I'll do this one as well. Alt, left click. This time I can press Control X, and that will dissolve edges as well. Now when I select this object and scale it down, now have a think why it's scaling in such a strange way. So that's because I've got my object origin down at the base here, so it's scaling towards the origin. I can change that by right-clicking, Set Origin to Geometry. So I'm going to go into Edit Mode and just tidy these up a bit and scale down a bit more. And I'm just gonna place it on the side here, just like that. Back into edit mode. I'll come to this side view, X-ray mode again, and just line it up. I'll choose edges for that, that'll be easier. Okay, out of X-ray mode, and then just see what we've got. I think it's better if it juts into the top here for the roof, and I'll move it in just a bit more. So it's nicely overlapping, and if I press G the next and stick it out, there's an awful sort of sticky out bit there, which you probably wouldn't build in, even though this is a fantasy castle. And just have a good look around, making sure there's no awkward bits like that. And that looks fine. Now the roof tiles should be the same thickness, so we can go in and edit simple things like that. So scale these in and just make them the same sort of thickness. And that's all looking fine. Now a quick note on optimizing for games. 
If I sort of go inside my shape, you can see there's lots of faces here that are unnecessary. So I can actually go in and maybe circle select actually would be better and select these faces. I'll select a fair few because we can see the ones that stick out. So I can deselect that one and I'll try and sort these out in a second and I'll just go in this side. So this is what you'd want to do if this was in a game, you'd want to get rid of these extra faces. So I'd press delete faces and there's these tiny gaps and we can easily sort those out by doing an edge slide GG and then edge slide that in. You won't notice the slight difference in the building so you'll be fine there. And there's some across the bottom there as well which we could get rid of also. And a quick note that a tiny bit of what's called overdraw like this is okay, it doesn't matter too much. You can optimize it even more by grabbing these ones and edge slide them down. It won't make too much difference to your performance because there's still the same amount of faces, but you've got more texture space when you're painting your textures and things. Now there's a tiny gap between these two, so I can just go into edit mode there. And if I go into isolation mode quickly with forward slash on my numpad, you can see there's a face at the top here. So I can select that, back out of isolation mode, G then Z, move that upwards and holding shift, so it's only in small increments. But also I can press delete on that face because we don't really need to see it because it's inside the object. Also with this object, which is the top turret here, that's got an extra face in there as well. So if I go into edit mode and delete that face also. So a tiny few things, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference because we only deleted about 10 or so faces, but if you're texture painting, they can take up texture space and they're just completely unnecessary. Let's grab this shape here and create a copy down here. So Shift D. Now because I've cut it up, I probably should have done that after doing this bit, but I can easily rotate around the Z 180 degrees and then it's turned around the other way. Line it up with these two and slot it in and then just edit certain areas so that they sort of stick in to our base. Now I might make this one a bit smaller, somewhere around there, so it's all very sort of top heavy. And we just got to check a few things so GG and GG, same down here, just to make sure they're sticking in. A bit of variation like that should be fine because it makes the whole shape look less uniform anyway. Now again, if we're optimizing for games, can you see this face down here? There's no real need for it because all these faces can join together in a pole down here. So if I grab all the vertices, so I go to one on my keyboard, I'll come across here to the options and make sure auto merge is on, I can then scale zero, and they should all be touching now. So if I now press G, they're all connected, and I can just make sure and pull that in there, and maybe delete a few faces as well in here. Let's just have a quick look at our shape and make sure we're happy. And I think that looks nice. So a few tips there for sort of low poly modeling and optimization. In the next episode, we'll talk about how to create the doors and windows and the flag. And if you've got any suggestions for what we could have on the other side of the island here, I'd love to hear your thoughts. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.